Welcome to worship. We are so glad you are joining us. In our gospel lesson today, Jesus tells a parable about a sower and some seed. He gives us much to think about. In the life of this congregation, you can be expecting a letter from Congregational President Cheryl Johnson about an opportunity to meet the candidate for associate pastor of the congregation. She will be here the weekend of August 1st and 2nd, and the letter gives you information about that weekend and also an opportunity to read more about the candidate and to see some worship services in which she is a part. We continue our outdoor worship services on Wednesdays throughout this month. Our first one was indoors because it was 92 degrees outside. Wednesdays at 7 p.m. are those services and we hope you join us. And now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
The first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 10 through 13. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy, and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading is from Romans, chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh of death is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, indeed it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they ha did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil, and they brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Gospel story opens, Jesus is having a very long, very difficult day. 
His day actually begins before today's text, a chapter earlier. Everything he does is challenged by the religious authorities. They accuse him of doing the devil's work. They discuss how they might kill him. Jesus counters their claims, continues to heal all within his reach, and counsels his followers. And at the end of the chapter, when he is told that his mother and brothers are outside waiting to speak to him, he points to his disciples and says, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother or sister or brother. People thought he had lost his mind. Then today's lesson begins with the words, That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. But Jesus can't get any alone time. The crowds are there. He gets into a boat so that more people can see and hear him, and he t starts telling stories. Now the story that is our focus today is memorable, but it's also a little ridiculous because seed is precious. No farmer in his or her right mind would sow this precious seed on the path on rocky ground or among thorns. In other words, this is the story of a really bad farmer. But then Jesus explains further, this seed is not just seed, it is God's word. It is wasted on the path, gobbled up by Pharisaic vultures who will accentuate the law and suck the love right out of it. It is wasted on gawkers who crowd around for superficial feel-good fix and make promises about coming back tomorrow, but by tomorrow they will be down the road, hangry for the next fix. It is wasted on the self-righteous keepers of the status quo who are thorns in Christ's life and ministry and would choke it out just to save face. But is the word wasted on us? Sometimes, yes, but in truth, our hearts are good soil. Maybe when you heard these words today, you heard judgment in the story because you feel like the hardened path, trampled, ignored, walked over. Maybe you feel the good seed fall on you and you are hopeful until someone snatches it away like the birds in the story. Or maybe you feel like that rocky ground. You've had faith, maybe even as long as you can remember, but you know that your roots are shallow and daily stories from the left and from the right make your head spin. You ask, maybe even you shout out loud, where is God in all of this? How can God allow this to happen? Maybe you feel like you've fallen among the thorns of life. It's so much effort just to get out of bed, to go through your routine, to remember to stay safe, to put on that darn mask without snapping yourself with the elastic, to keep your distance even from friends you haven't seen in forever. We are still grieving after the world tells us we're supposed to be over it. We are stressed out and we feel guilty for it because we know so many other people have it harder than we do. And we look around and everyone else seems to have it together, but we know that we don't. And all of this blocks out the sun. And all of that leads us into self-judgment. It is easy to read this story and think we've gone astray and need to become that good soil. But the fact is that all of us have times of feeling like we are the hardened path or the rocky ground or the thorn-choked soil. We all have all three of those in us at the same time, but we also have the good soil in us. It's in each and every one of us. And that being said, there's so much more to this story God is a really bad farmer because God loves the dirt so much that seed is flung where no seed could legitimately grow. 
While human farmers are careful about their wise use of precious seeds, farmer God is not. God doesn't spend time wondering where the rock, whether the rocky or the hardened or the thorny soil measures up or is worthy of the seeds. What kind of a farmer wastes so much? Well, the kind of farmer who doesn't believe anything or anyone is hopeless. The kind of God who loves dirt more than what it yields. God the farmer simply sows without judgment or expectation. God just keeps loving unrelentingly. There's no limit to God's extravagance. As most of you know, I am a farm kid. I grew up watering seedlings under fluorescent lights in the basement, tying strings to stakes to make sure the rows were even on planting day, pulling weeds in the hot sun and the pouring rain. Extravagance was not the word. Waste not, want not was the word. But God is a dirt farmer, not a gardener. God knows that the faith that springs up in the rocky soil without adequate root ends up enriching and building that soil for the next seeds. God knows that the birds carry away seeds because they are hungry too. All things work together in creation. And even in extravagance, God the dirt farmer knows about composting and crop rotation and fertilizer. Even in extravagance, God knows that good soil doesn't just happen. It comes from remnants of things once lost and discarded. Good soil is alive through the composting of dead things. Good soil is resurrection. Out of things discarded, life springs forth in a bountiful harvest. Extravagance is not wasteful. It's about loving and valuing everything and not seeing anything as a mistake. If we could touch that, grasp it, and embrace it, we can get past that preoccupation with what kind of soil we are. We can stop judging ourselves for our lack of faith, our times of doubt, our bits of disbelief. Because once we realize that God's bad farming techniques are done out of love, this parable begins to sound different. It is calling us. It's about being good soil, of course, but the deeper calling is to follow God's lead and to be really bad farmers ourselves. It is a call to go out into the world and cultivate gardens of love. In both the places of rich soil and the places of paths and rocks and thorns. It is a call to love even when logic and past experience tell us that it's a lost cause. It is our call to go out and love the dirt wherever it is found. Amen.
let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Gracious God, your word has been sown in so many ways and places. We pray for missionaries and newly planted congregations around the world. Inspire us by their witness to the faith we share. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Creating God, the mountains and hills burst into song and the trees and fields clap their hands in praise. We pray for the birds and animals who make their home in the trees and for lands stripped bare by deforestation. Empower us to sustainably use what you have given. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Reigning God, we pray for our nation's leaders. Increase their desire for justice and equality. We pray for our enemies. Bridge the chasms that divide us and guide authorities to a deep and lasting peace. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Abiding God, care for all who are in need, especially those on our prayer list, those we hold in our hearts, those recovering from surgery, those being treated for COVID-19, cancer, and other diseases, and for those who are nearing death. For those who are doubting, renew faith. For those who are worrying, provide release. For those who are struggling, ease burdens. For those in fear, give hope. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Renewing God, revive your church in this place. Nourish and nurture the seeds you have planted that we might grow as disciples. Replace what has been depleted. Sustain the ministries of this place and deepen relationships with the wider communities. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for all who have died. Comfort us in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, wherever you are today, come to the table of the Lord and receive nourishment for your journey. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. body and 
the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Receive the benediction. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator, Jesus, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Thank you.